Hi, this is Celeste from CreateJix Realm, and today I'm going to show you how to create a web form through Business Catalyst and a uh, workflow. So, this is the website that we are going to um, create a, a web form for. <clears throat> so, we're going to make one that looks like this. So you can see there's lots of information on this one. Uh, so we're going to make something similar to it, probably not all the information, uh, just because due to time constraints. So uh, let's get started on that. So I'm logged into my business catalyst. This is the main page. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a workflow. Floor. Sorry, a <laughs> workflow. So basically what that is, is that whenever someone submits a web form, there's steps that happen, uh, whether it's submitted to you or an employee, Whoever needs to get that information right away. I've already created some workflows here. Uh, so this one's going to be for a Lena Latina storyteller. So I'll create one for that. And this is the registration form. So we'll do next. <clears throat> Yeah, so this one I want to email Alina, which would be the first step. There's Alina's name here. You could put however many minutes um, this task should be taken care of, you know, for people who want more rapid response on web forms. You could mention that it needs to be done within a few minutes, um, so minutes, hours, days, and weeks. This isn't too pressing, so we'll just leave this as um, not applicable. And then uh, the rest of this, you can get a reminder after so many minutes. You can also, if the first person doesn't take care of the task, it could be sent to a second person and give that a certain amount of minutes it needs to be taken care of. Or you could have something approved before things move forward. So it's, it's pretty powerful, the work floor, workflow. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying workflow. Um, so let's see what else. And send workflow message to customer. That's an option too, which you can set up um, over here. Customize system email. So we've got this one, and I'll show what this looks like. So you could send a message here to the customer. So for right now, we're just going to do a basic one. So I'm saving this step. So right now, this task for Alina Latina Storyteller registration, it's going to email Alina and let her know that someone's registered for her program. So now we can go to our web forms. And normally, since what I want is very similar to the summer camp setup, I would probably just go ahead and copy that one. You could just click on that and then there's an option for copy. But I'm going to show you how to create one from scratch. There's a copy of this web form there. So I'm going to create another web form. I'm going to call it um, ALS for Lena Latina Storyteller. Registration. And the workflow I want. Workflow? <laughs> Forget it. The workflow I want is this one. <laughs> Okay, save. Now you're always going to get this in any web form um, on Business Catalyst, these first three, um, just kind of standard and <clears throat> is required. So the rest of the stuff you can add extra. So we'll take a look at this one, this web form. First name, last name. So we need um, home address, suite, or apartment. And as you can see, there is a required asterisk behind home address but not suite or apartment, so I'll show you how to do that. Um, so you have these tabs, contacts, marketing, miscellaneous, lists, and CRM forms. And then you have custom fields down here. So this is kind of basic. So we're going to do home address. And then it doesn't have a suite or apartment, so what we do is we'd create a text string, which is basically saying that I just want a box people could type in. So we'll click there. And it's asking us for a field. 
Let's put suite or apartment number. Make sure that's what I wrote here. Yep. Okay, and I'm not going to have this as required because some people don't have suites or apartments, some people just live in homes. Um, so we're just going to hit save. And as you can see, it's down here. So we're just going to drag it. Oh, I just remembered. Um, when you get things in boxes, or as you can see, I can't drag this under home or address because this is all one setting right here. Um, so we're going to have to actually create these fields separately, and, which is fine. We don't need country because we know it's in the U.S. So let me just do that. So text string, we'll put home address. That one's required. And we'll do another one of city. Another one is state. And zip code. Okay, so I got an extra one there, but we can work with that later. So I can drag this down under home address. There, so. That gives me a little more functionality. Um, apparently when you click home address, it gives you the whole list, but you can't move things around. And as you can see, I don't have a required box in there, so people can pass on that. Um, I have email address, work phone number, cell phone number. So I got a duplicate here, so I'm just gonna click this. So we have email address, um, so let's do work phone number. And another one. And cell phone number. And now this next one, it's going to be show options. Um, Alina Latina Storyteller only has one show, um, so that's not going to be in there. So we're going to have student's name, date of birth, and then these two. Uh, circular options here, the radio box as they call. So we'll do the next one of student's name. Date of birth. It looks like we have a calendar here, so let's see, I think there's an option in here. Date of birth right there. Perfect. So we have the date of birth there. Looks like it still wants one. Um, and then the radio boxes. So this is going to be checkbox list. So let's put gender. Let's put female. And mail. Okay, so we got our boxes there, and the next thing would be the age, and that's gonna be a drop down. So do six years old. I'm just gonna copy this part of it so it's repetitive. Seven, we got eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. If she goes to seventeen, fifteen. 16, last one. Got an extra box, so we'll just delete that and save. And we've got homeschool grade. Let's see. So that's another text string. And 
and the grade is a drop down list. We'll just do one grade, so uh, we'll do two. So it doesn't take as long. I'll do, I guess we'll do four. We can fill in the extras later. I'll just keep this short for now. Okay, um, and then we're just going to create the word verification in the box below. Um, <clears throat> the one thing I want to add extra that's not in this is they have to download a PDF uh, for emergency contact. So I just want to remind them that they need to do that. So I'm just going to put a, let's see. Yeah, we'll do a checkbox list. So, um, let's just mention that. Okay, emergency contact form needed from guardian or parent. Please, uh, so hey, please remember to download PDF form. on the top of this page and mail to Alina. Let's put uh, I will fill out emergency form okay we just want them to click that so and last thing we need was the password um, it's a verification form image verification. This is just to make sure that spam doesn't t uh, fill in these web forms, which is annoying. So we got all the information we need. We're saving. And I'm going to show you how to apply it to your web page. And I'm going to show that to you in part two. Let's see if there's anything else I can go over real quick. Um, list is just for email campaigns. Um, this makes it easier to apply web forms to lists. Um, you can also do file attachments, which is nice. Uh, this is just for getting people's information. So pretty basic. You can preview your web form, and all the stuff can be modified um, through CSS if you know how to do that, or HTML. Let's see what else. Set up notification email. This is the email the customer gets once they signed up, um, so you can change that here. See, I don't want my email address in here, so I'll change that later. And let's see, you can create an HTML template and upload that, and then put your information in there. So that's pretty much um, it for web forms. So then I'll go ahead and show you how to apply it to your web page in part two.